Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome today to my review of what is quite possibly the most interesting and the most attractive AliExpress watch that I have reviewed to date. So many AliExpress brands just turn out one for one copies of the big Swiss brands and you know, that's fine if that's what you want. One brand that doesn't do that is Mercure with their sister brands Season, FOD and Pierre Paulin. They seem determined to do things differently, a lot of the pieces are quite retro in design, some really interesting use of colour and interesting movement choices. Today I have got Pierre Paulin's brand new Jump Hour watch, the first of its kind that I have ever reviewed on the channel. Now you might expect a watch with a Jump Hour movement to be expensive, but it isn't. This costs 130 US dollars regular price, even less than that during a sale. And you know what? There's a sale on at the moment. Now you saw the pop up. This video is sponsored by Pierre Paulin. I was sent this watch for free, I do not have to send it back. I will therefore of course leave a link to the listing on AliExpress in the description of the video. I know what you're thinking, $130? Jump our movement? What's the catch? This thing is going to be rough. Well my macro lens does its best to uncover rough edges, but I can't find any. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, no messing around today. Let's start with the money shot. This is the party piece. This is why you buy one of these. It's for the jump hour movement. The dial layout is kind of familiar with a small second sub dial at six and a central minute hand, but it doesn't have an hour hand. Instead, the hours are displayed by a disc underneath the index at 12, kind of like a date window, but not quite like a date window. You can see here if I set the movement exactly as the minute hand passes the 12, that hour display wheel flicks forward one hour, or if I wind the crown back, flicks backwards one hour. Jump hours go all the way back to the 1880s and they have enjoyed moments in the sunshine at both ends of the 20th century, but these days they're a real rarity, especially at the affordable end of the market. Like I said, this is the first one I've seen. The fact that you can buy it for $130 is therefore pretty amazing. I only really have one major issue with this watch and it's definitely not the way it looks. With that all out of the way, I would like you to have a close look at the dial under my macro lens and then under my double magnification macro lens. You tell me, can you see any imperfections here? Because I can't, this dial is just stunning for the price. You can get this one in silver white, but this is a beautiful shade of salmon pink with just enough pink in it, but not too much. The Breguet numerals and hands suit the overall style. The hour display is in a very Art Deco style recess. Branding is thankfully subtle with the Pierre Paulin name and automatic sitting just underneath the hour display. There are some radial grooves on the inner portion and some concentric circular grooves on the recess small second register. The two hands are blue and I do say blue rather than blued. I don't imagine today's budget stretches to authentic thermal bluing, but I don't think it really matters. And if we get really close in, you can see all the printing is perfectly acceptable. There's even a circular brush texture to the middle track, if you will, where the minute numerals sit. So we have texture, we have depth, we have colour, we have mixed finishing, and everything is done really well. There are not too many watches that can survive inspection this close, certainly not at this price. Let's take it back a couple of stages then and have a look at the packaging. Now I did say that Pierre Paulin were part of the Mercure group of brands and they're not shy of telling you that on this bicolor zip box and that is one of the thickest instruction manuals I have seen in ages. I mean, what could you possibly need to know about this watch that would require that much tree? I have no idea and I don't intend to find out. Underneath there is yet another reminder that you are now a member of Team Mercure. It is nice of them to chuck in a little polishing cloth nonetheless. There's even a redundant spring bar tool. Now I say redundant because this watch has quick release spring bars. No complaints then about the packaging, especially considering the price. On to dimensions. Now the silver white is available in 36 if you prefer that size. Personally, this one fits me really nicely as you'll see in a minute or two, but then again my personal sweet spot is 38 to 42 and this is 38 mil in diameter. It's a little bit thick at 12 5, but I think at least 2.5 mil of that thickness comes from the crystal. Lug to lug is exactly where you want it to be at 46.5. 
20mm between the lugs, and as supplied on this rather nice leather strap, it weighs 71 grams. There is a funky looking bracelet for an extra $20, but I'd just stick with the strap if I was you. They claim 50 meters of water resistance, but I'm not sure how many of these will ever see one meter of water. Crystal is box double dome K1 mineral, and the movement is a modified Seagull ST1731 with jumping hour and no date. You can't see it though because of this stainless steel case back. That's definitely not a complaint because this is what it would look like if you could see it. Pretty basic. A little bit of finishing here and there, but like I said, I'm not complaining that they've covered it up. Once again, rather than saying Pierre Paulin, just like the packaging, the case back advertises the fact that it was designed and made by the Mercure Watch Group. Yes. The ST17 is a 3 hertz movement, so 21,600 vibrations per hour. Not that it really matters because this is a small second variant. And again, I'm not exactly sure of the dual count, but again, that doesn't really matter all that much either, let's be honest. Seagull quote a 42 hour power reserve, but this one does not hack. You cannot stop the small second from doing its thing. They have, however, been making the ST17 since 2001. So, you know, it's a known quantity, even in this slightly unusual variant. It's a simple vintage style case, all brush, which I appreciate. A very slim mid case with drilled lugs. Again, nice to see if somewhat unnecessary because of the spring bars included with this strap. But that will no doubt come in handy because this thing will eat straps for breakfast, I reckon. There's a classic two stage step bezel and then that big piece of crystal sitting on top. Now it's a quite large 6.8 millimeter crown and provides plenty of grip if you do want to wind the watch by hand, but that is the M for Mercure on the crown though, rather than P for Pierre Paulin. The supplied strap is actually really good quality. It's decently stitched, the sides are sealed, it's very comfortable and it's nice and flexible. But if you don't like it, they make it very easy to swap out for something that you do like. I think maybe chestnut brown would make this watch look more retro and also bring out the salmon tones of the dial. But once again, the strap is branded with Mercure rather than Pierre Paulin. Even the buckle reminds you that Pierre Paulin are part of the Mercure watch group. Can you feel that major issue that I talked about steadily ramping up over the course of the video? Anyway, before I explode, let's get this thing on wrist. And I did say it fits me nicely because I think it does fit me nicely. I am, however, frustratingly between holes on the leather strap. Isn't that always the case? So it's either a little bit too tight or a little bit too loose. In this case, in this shot, I'm wearing it a bit too tight so that it sits nicely for these wrist rolls. You can see here some of the lovely flecto that you get from that mineral crystal as my wrist turns. And as I said, a lot of the height of the watch is from that crystal, so it doesn't feel big, doesn't feel bobbly or ungainly when it's on wrist. And that's the pocket shot to finish. Maybe my floral shorts are a little bit too casual for this one, to be honest. Perhaps something in pastel colored linen would have suited this one a little better, but I don't own any shorts in pastel colored linen, so these will have to do for now. The watch is light, comfy, unobtrusive, great size, no comfort issues at all. All right, my favorite part of the video, the moans and niggles section. Well, look, these seagull movements are perfectly serviceable by the average decent watchmaker, so don't worry about that. But let's be honest with ourselves for a moment. If this breaks in five years time, are you gonna get it serviced or are you just gonna go out and buy another one? I think we all know the answer to that question. And I have read some less than complimentary comments about Mercure's customer service on their Instagram. Double check everything is to your satisfaction therefore before you peel off the stickers. The grey strap is good, but perhaps a little contemporary for the watch head considering how old fashioned looking the dial is but I'm not sure that even qualifies as a niggle, just more an observation really. But I will direct my ire today at their branding. This is supposed to be a Pierre Paulin watch. It says Pierre Paulin on the dial after all. Why then does the crown have an M on it and not a P? Why does the case back talk about Mercure and not Pierre Paulin? Why does the strap say Mercure on it, not once, but twice? And why does the packaging advertise Mercure on it a further three times? If you're keeping score, that is a proper thrashing. Mercure 7, Pierre Paulin 1. What is that all about? My guess is 
cost saving. It's the same case back, the same packaging, the same strap being used on watches across all four of their sub brands. But can you imagine the Swatch Group doing that? Can you imagine a Breguet with the word Breguet on the dial, but Swatch Group on the case back, the strap and the packaging? No, of course you can't, because Swatch Group aren't shit at branding. And it's not like there's any great halo effect from having Mercure everywhere. It's not like every child grows up dreaming of owning a Mercure. They have a very limited international profile, as far as I can tell. So if they want Pierre Paulin to become a respected and identifiable brand, they can't continue to cut corners like this. They need to pay the extra 10 cents or whatever it costs to get some specific bespoke packaging, some different buckles and a custom case back. Right, I can take a breath now and go back to summarizing my thoughts about this watch. I still think it is excellent value for money, I really do. Have a look at it next to this Baltic HMS 001 that costs about three times as much money. They really are rather similar, especially when you compare the two case profiles side by side. Now, I am not suggesting here that Mercure have copied Baltic. Both brands use a very typical mid-century case and bezel shape. Similar then, but there's a strong argument that the Pierre Paulin is not only far cheaper, but it's actually far more interesting. AliExpress may be better known for its homage watches, its blatant copies and lookalikes, but if you dig a bit deeper, you can also unearth some really interesting and really good value gems like this one. So there you have it, a fairly remarkable watch considering the price tag. There are, however, a couple of question marks, of course, about the movement's longevity and serviceability and Mercure's customer service or lack thereof. So make sure if you are in for one of these, you go in with both eyes wide open, but I'm really impressed with this one as a design. What's next from the stable? No idea, but I'm quite looking forward to it. If you want an AliExpress oddity, but not this AliExpress oddity, why not have a look at these two AliExpress oddities? Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you again soon.